I will pass you over to Gil from Supersonic Ads. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gil from Supersonic Ads. Supersonic Ads is a leading provider for in social games of uh, brand and DR campaigns, DR direct response campaign. And as most of you know, um, only 2% of the users of the, of the gamers actually take their credit card out of, out of their pocket and pay to the game. Now I'm here to talk to you today about the other 98% of the non-paying users. So let's start. So it's not working? Okay. So remember when we used to talk about ARPU with 1P, which is average revenue per paying users? But then a sea of animals started getting on the way of our total audience, and we got the whales, the minnows, and the dolphins. The whales are the heavy users or the paying users. The minnows and the dolphins are the light users or the non-paying users. So to deal with all of that, we added another P to the ARPU and make it ARPU with two Ps, which is average revenue per paying users. And by doing that, we actually took a P on the revenue that could be generated from the other 98% of your users. So I'm here to tell you today that your monetization strategy should be like this. Direct payments and ads can live together in harmony. It's all about choosing the right ad strategy because today with all the data that we can get uh, from our user on our users, we must know uh, after a so few days uh, who is the paying user and who is the non-paying user. And I'm saying that it's a must to treat different users differently. Here are some facts that I want to show you real, real quick. As, you, as, as we said on the web, only one to 5% of people take credit card out, out of the pocket and pay to the game. On mobile, you see almost the same numbers, 0.5 to 6% pay to the game. And from the other side, we have Zynga. I don't know if it's the best thing to quote Zynga today, but that generated $27 million in ad revenues in the first quarter, and it's up to 230% from previous year, and almost $41, million, $41 million in the second quarter, which is up to 45 from previous quarter. So what, I, what you saw from this uh, slide is that you should pay attention to your ad monetization strategy. Please don't miss this great opportunity. Some more facts that I want to share. It, this is from Casual Games Association. You see that the Casual Games revenue stream is like this. 40% come from advertising since the offers are advertising. So 40% advertising, 60% real money. So it's 40-60 split, it's almost 50-50 already and as you can see on the next one from the inside the network they did a study they asked the users what is the preferable way to pay on the casual games and they said that you see in the second place is promotional offers so let's say that there is no question that the users are, are adapting this way of payment and they like it okay so I want to tell you that uh, when I meet publishers, they, I met many objections why not to use ad, ad monetization strategy on their games. And uh, I, I decided to call this uh, objection myth and I put them here on this presentation. And I, the fourth, uh, the fourth uh, most important one that I met is advertising is gonna fuck up my game. The second, ad stake the users out of the experience. The third one is I don't want to cannibalize my paying users. And the fourth one is the revenue is not meaningful enough. Well, we'll see. So before we start, there is many ad products to choose from, okay? There is display ads, interstitials, achievement ads, offer wall, and reward-based vid video, which I'm gonna talk about a bit more in a second. Okay, so if you're talking about advertising gonna fuck up your game, well, if you do that, we do have a problem, okay? But if you know to avoid these pitfalls or don't interrupt your users 
or don't distract your user, wrong ad, nor not relevant ad, it's very important for you to choose the right ad network to work with to get the right uh, ads to the right audience for good matching. Clicking ads but by mistake while playing, which is a big no-no. Uh, it's all about design. We're going to talk a bit about that a bit uh, more. And in the end, if you shower your user with many ads and you don't give him nothing in return, he will feel exploited in the end. Let's go to the second myth who says ads take gamers out of the experience. So I'm saying that ads can act like enablers in the game, like achievement ads that help the user to get to the next level. Also, ads can be a, a utility in the game, like in uh, Car Town, for example, when you uh, watch a video ad and you get XP point, which is a fuel point to help you go further in the game. Okay, and in the end, ads are best friends of the non-paying users. Let me show you here a sample that we made with Mighty Pirates from CrowdStar. It will be loaded in a second, I hope. So. Yeah, but <laughs> I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So let's for, wait for a sec if it's not, uh, yeah. So this is Mighty Pirates from Crowdstar, and as, as you see, on the left side, there is a button, who is the watch and earn button, okay, that the user can ignore if he likes, and if he don't ignore it, he press the button, and he gets this. Okay, this is a pop-up, I turn the, uh, the voice down, okay, uh, from uh, the Pirates movie. As you can see, on the top, it says to the user, just watch the entire video below and earn one Facebook credit, okay? Um, if the user sees the video till the end, he gets what, one Facebook credit and he go back to the game with his credit, okay? And let's say that all this pop-up is a property of the advertiser. He can do on this pop-up almost whatever he likes. I can uh, see that in the last uh, months, there is a kind of gamification of the ads and advertisers ask us to do mini games in the ad instead of a video. And it doesn't matter because anyway, we need to have some action that the user will do in order to get reward or Facebook credits or XP point or X amount of coins, whatever. And of course that in the end, you can click to the landing page of the advertiser. In this case, it's Facebook. I won't click on it because it, it will take years, but I can tell you that for this click, there is around 20% click-through rate, which means that one of five users that will show this ad will click to the landing page. Now let's talk a bit about pricing. This ad is, uh, the cost of this ad for the advertiser is 20 to 25 cent CPV, cost per view, okay? If you calculating the CPM, it's between 200 and 200 dollars CPM. But from the other side, if we have like 20% uh, percent click through rate to the landing page, it means that one of five users, because it's, it's as you can see, it's limited um, one time per user. So you need five views, five users to have one click. Five views will cost you between one euro to one euro 25. So this is the cost of a unique user who saw, uh, com who complete to see the video and decided to click next to the landing page, okay? And when he finished the video, he already got the point. So he don't have to click it to the landing page, but he does because I guess that we know to do uh, very good targeting. As you can see, this is the pirate uh, movie inside the pirate game. It's 100% matching. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so as you see, it's opt-in. We ask the user if you want to see it. And even after he opens the pop-up, you have an option to close it and not to watch it, okay? Most of them do watch it till the end. Let's go back. Okay. Of course, it's not intrusive. It's not a wrong ad to the not relevant uh, users. As uh, you see, it's 100% matching. 
and it's, you cannot click this ad by mistake. It's sitting on the side, it's subtle, it's not intrusive. And in the end, the gamer is not feeling exploited because he got reward for his actions. This is another uh, slide that I stole for one of my publishers. You see that the user got to a place when you have no more energy. And you see that there is three options that the, the publisher gives him. One is to ask for it from his friend. The other one is to watch an ad and earn. And the third one is to take out his credit, his credit card and buy. So you see that it's a great example how to use, how to treat different users differently, okay? Um, another data point that I want to share is that 95% of the users who never buy anything after 30 days will never buy anything throughout their lifetime. I can tell you that I speak with publisher who told me that after two days they can know almost for sure if the user is gonna be a paying user or a non-paying user. And I'm saying that if you know that this user is not a paying user, this is exactly the, ti the time to serve him a delicious ad. Okay. Let's go back to I don't want to cannibalize my paying users, okay? So if you do integrate ads in your game, it will increase engagement, increase retention, increase traffic, and of course increase output with one pool because you don't uh, talk only to the paying uh, users and it increase the, conver the conversion from the non-paying user for the paying users. And you need to remember that free players are essential to your game's success, so please keep them happy. Let's go to the third one, the revenue is not meaningful enough, okay? So first of all, I, I have to tell you that three, four years ago when we went into the ad agencies, let's say in London, they almost kicked us out of the offices when they heard the price. They didn't understand about social games. They didn't understand why they need to pay so much more if they can buy CPM products like pre-roll, post-roll, mid-roll, whatever. And they didn't want to deal with this new product. But today, it's a whole different story. We ca I can tell you that we have 80% rebooking rate, okay? And most of the advertiser increase spend after the first buy. And as you know, in the social games, the engagement is three times higher than on TV. And as I told you that the post-click rates are between 15 to 30 percent. It's a very high C uh, CTR. And of course, that CPV is preferable to CPM because if it's 200 to 250 dollars instead of five to 15 dollars, it's a whole different story. So, I can tell you that uh, if you're talking about the revenue that is not meaningful enough, that we have publishers who make with us $10,000 a day. Now, I'm not saying that it's really uh, easy to achieve this amount, and not all the publishers can do it. You have to have a very large audience to do it. But um, let's say that uh, the average is a bit lower, but it's also very big numbers per day. And for the publisher, okay, if we look uh, from his angle, he will get between 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 cent per each view, which says that it's between 40 to 60 dollars CPM direct to the publisher pocket, okay? Completion rates for the video are 80 percent because I think that if you do uh, the targeting right, there is uh, no reason why not to get this kind of uh, completion rates, and I guess that uh, maybe we do something right if, we d if you get it. And of course, be strategic on selecting your ad networks partner because you have to know where your audience is. And if your audience is in, I don't know, East Europe and Japan, I guess you need to find two different networks that specialize in these areas. Um, and it's because it's very important to give to your uh, players the right ads, because if not, they're not going to play along. Now, I talk about a bit uh, gamification of a game. Let me give you an example. This is something that we did with Adidas. Hmm. One sec. It's something that we did with Adidas to the Olympic Games. Mm -mm. Okay, let's wait for a second. Here it is. This is the Adidas. 
As you see, this is car town. On the right side, there is a watch and earn button. Again, not intrusive. And if the user click on the button, he gets this game. This is a mini game that we created for Adidas for the Olympic Games. Uh, when you start the game, you will see London background in the back. And for make the perfect dive, you need to press the space bar three times and to earn the Facebook credit. So the user have to do an action to get the credit, but it's not have to be a video, okay? But if you, if you see, if we will press it again and again, just a second, here the third time, and we will get the Facebook credit, and there is an option, of course, to go to the landing page of the advertisers. In this case, it's Adidas. So, we need to do it all, ag all over again. Okay, so mobile examples. As you see, on the left side, there is a small button. It can be very easily watch and earn button. The user will click it, the video will open, and he will see the video till the end. If he sees the video till the end, he will get X amount of, amount of coins, and in the end, he will be able to press to get to the landing page of the advertiser. The concluding slide. Game become a new mass media that is scalable and targeted for advertisers. I can tell you that it's rival TV, it's rival web and mobile. Everybody understands that this is a new territory that they got to be in. The second conclusion is don't pee on your audience. The third one is direct payment and ad monetization can live together in harmony. It's not an either or discussion, okay? And almost the last one, be thoughtful about how you roll up out your ad products, it's not one size fits all. You need to think about how you give your user the option to get further in the game with the ads, okay? Not, int not interrupt him in the game, but help him to go further in the game. It's very important. And the last conclusion is it's happening. Brands and agencies are on board and it more are coming. And if you, if you don't have uh, ad strategy, you should have, and if you still don't, please think about it. Thank you. And Thank you very much, Gil. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? We have a question at the front. Hello, Jill. I'm from Disksoft. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, you very best uh, tell them about advertising, but uh, can you uh, provide some examples of good ad frameworks or maybe uh, some products of products of your uh, casual games association uh, which we can use really in uh, uh, iOS and Android applications or maybe in casual games? Thank you. Uh, I can tell you that we are dealing mostly with branded video and with off-the-wall uh, DR campaigns. And DR campaigns are going uh, r really well on the mobile. And uh, let's say that I showed a sample that you can do also the video, the branding video also on the mobile. And this is what we are doing in uh, Supersonic Ads. We do it, yeah. The, the samples that I show you, it's we did it. We, we also uh, make the mini game for Adidas. We make mini games now for many advertisers. We did it with Dove. We did it uh, with uh, so many more. And it's, uh, it's like a new thing and it's, uh, it's nice. You're welcome. Hi there. Um, on iOS, um, is awarding virtual currency for watching videos, is that permitted? Sorry. under the App Store guidelines? Because I know Apple have had problems with those kind of incentives Sorry? in the past. Can you ask o again? On iOS, yeah. is the strategy of awarding virtual currency for watching videos allowed? Yeah, we do it. Yeah. Any more for any more? Uh, if not, I have a question, uh, obviously. Um, I kind of raised one earlier, I'm going to repeat it to you, but before I do that, I'm going to just chuck in a little bit, which is, 
I think there's something which you were talking about which makes me, reminds me that sometimes the advert itself not just gives you money, but also gives you brand associations, which is kind of what you were talking about. Yeah. Bearing that in mind, I'm going to ask that question I asked the cross-promotion guys. So at what price does an ad, a paid ad, offset the value you'd get by doing cross-promotion? Do you see these as two separate things, or are they entirely compatible? Uh, let's say that we don't look at it as a separate thing. Uh, we treat it as the same, and um, it's the same prices, the same everything. But where would you put the priority, or would you say that it's a balance? It depends on the advertiser's uh, needs and uh, whatever he wants to do. And sometimes I can tell you that advertiser can choose to, to do several kind of uh, advertising tools together, like to get uh, uh, some sign-ups, they, they dealing with, they choosing the DR campaigns, and to do the branding, they use uh, the video campaigns. So on the same time, they get the installs or whatever they want, and from the other side, they get the branding option. Thank you very much. Last chance. In that case, I will thank Gil.